My name is Tiffany and welcome back to Upcycle by Tito where I take all forgotten items and give them a new life. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and give me a thumbs up. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I turned this oversized bathing suit and curtain into this reversible bikini and cover up. Full disclaimer, this is the first time I've ever attempted to make a bathing suit, so I did have to do a little bit of research, but I came across this amazing YouTube channel. It's called Edgewater Avenue. She has a ton of really, really awesome swimwear tutorials. I'm gonna link that in the description box below if you guys wanna check that out. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a thrifted tankini top, a swim skirt, and a curtain. Do you guys remember when tankinis were like super in? I remember my mom bought me this one tankini from Australia like when I was in high school and I was obsessed with it. I got the tankini top for $5.99 and the curtain for $2.99 at a Goodwill and then I scored the swim skirt for $2 at a Salvation Army. Now that we know what we're gonna be working with, let's dive right into it. You'll need a sewing machine, overlocker, cutting mat, ruler, thrifted swimsuit, thrifted curtain, parchment paper, fabric shears, rotary cutter, loop turner, sewing pins, fabric marker, seam ripper, and a needle and thread. So this top actually fits me pretty well. It's only slightly big, and as far as a tankini top goes, it's pretty standard. This skirt, however, is massive. It is a standard swim skirt, so it does have the brief portion underneath the skirt. As for the curtain, it's just a regular old curtain with this gorgeous lace hem. Let's move on to the game plan. Let's start with the tankini top. From the front portion of the top, I'm gonna cut out a pattern for my bikini top that looks something like this. Still using the same portion of fabric, I'm gonna cut out the front of my bikini bottoms. From the back portion of the tankini, I'm gonna cut out the mirrored piece to my bikini top as well as the back piece of my bikini bottoms. From the bust part of the original tankini top, I'll cut out the pattern I need for the back of my bikini top. With any fabric I have left over, I'll cut two one-inch straps. Using the swim skirt, I cut out all of the same pieces since we are making this bikini reversible. Let's move on to the cover-up. I'll cut out two panels for the front, and the back will also have two identical panels. Then, I'll use the lace portion of the curtain to make the sleeves. From the top portion of the curtain, I'll make the casing for my waistband, and with whatever fabric I have left over, I'll make the tie that I'll use as a waistband. As always, we are going to start this project by seam ripping. So I'm not too fussed about the skirt because I have so much fabric to play with, but I am a little concerned about the top because I wanna do that tie front thing with the straps. So I don't really have like that much fabric to play with and I'm gonna be pretty conservative about like cutting this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and seam rip this and then we can start our journey into converting this into a reversible bikini. Good morning! I'm in a different athleisure outfit which can only mean that seam ripping took way too long yesterday and then it got too dark and then I couldn't continue filming but now I have all of my pieces ready to go and we can start drafting our pattern I'm gonna start by using a pair of bikini bottoms that I already own and I know fit me well the first thing that I do is identify the center of the front and mark that using some sewing pins now using my ruler I draw a line on the parchment paper Using the sewing pins as a guide, I line up the center of the bikini bottom with that line that we just created. Then, I draw out the shape of the bikini bottoms onto the parchment paper. Using my Sharpie, I go ahead and smooth out all of those lines. Now, fold it in half along the line that we drew. Cut out the pattern. Now, you should have a symmetrical front pattern piece. Repeat all the same steps to draft the back piece of your bikini bottom, making sure that you're using the back portion of your existing bikini bottoms as reference. Now that we're done drafting the pattern for our bottoms, let's move on to the top. Once again, I'm using an existing bikini top to draft my pattern. I draw along the armhole, side seam, and bottom to copy the general shape of this bikini top. Then, I extend this section to create the new pattern piece for our tie front bikini top. Again, with my Sharpie, I go over the pattern and smooth out any rough edges. Cut out the pattern. Moving on to the back piece. Using your ruler, draw a line on your parchment paper. Using that line as a guide, draw a perpendicular line. Using the same method as the bikini bottoms, identify the center of the back portion and mark with some pins. Using the lines as a guide, lay out your bikini top, trace the side seam, and mark the lowest point of the center of the back. Draw a curved line joining these two points. I use my front pattern as a reference to make sure that the side seams are the same height. Smooth out any rough edges with your Sharpie. 
fold the paper in half and cut. Now that we have all the pieces, your pattern should look something like this. Now that I have all the pattern pieces made, we can start mapping it out on the fabric. On my cutting mat, I've laid out the fabric from the front of the tankini and I'm mapping out my pattern pieces. Now I'm pinning the pattern pieces in place to make sure that it doesn't shift while cutting. Using my rotary cutter, I cut out the fabric leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm repeating all the same steps with the fabric from the back of the tankini, making sure that I flip the pattern for my bikini top so that I have a mirrored piece instead of an identical one. Repeat these steps for the back piece of your bikini top. With the fabric I had left over, I measured and cut out two one inch straps. With all the pieces cut out, you should have something that looks like this. With those pieces as a guide, go ahead and cut out identical pieces from the swim skirt. Now you have all the pieces for what essentially is two bikinis. I'm gonna start by putting the bikini top together and the first thing I'm gonna do is attach the front pieces to the back piece. So what I've done is I've pinned the side seams together and I'm going to sew it together with my overlocker. And if you don't have an overlocker, you can use your regular sewing machine, but just make sure to use a zigzag stitch. You should have something that looks like this. Now go ahead and do the same thing with the other fabric. You should now have two pieces that look like this. I'm going to place them on top of each other, right sides facing, and pin along all the edges to secure. With your overlocker, serge all around the top, making sure not to sew at these two points. Now that I've sewn both pieces together, it's time to attach the swimwear elastic. And I'm basically just going to attach it to all the places that we just surged. While you're sewing the elastic, you wanna make sure that you're not stretching it out. So you're just gonna to wanna to lay it on the fabric, guide it through and make sure that you're not pulling the elastic while you're surging. I had to pause because Daisy is so cute right now. I've gone ahead and sewn elastic all along the top and the bottom of the top. Now we can move on to the straps. So I pinned both pieces of fabric right sides facing and I'm going to serge all along this side and this side, creating a narrow channel in the middle. Now that I've sewn them together, I'm going to go ahead and attach the swimwear elastic to just one side. Now with my loop turner, I'm going to flip this inside out. Now you should have something that looks like this. This is one side and that's the other. Repeat this for the other strap. I've made both my straps and I've cut them to about 10 inches. Now we can insert them to the top. So please don't hate me, but we are going to have to seam rip a tiny little hole. I'm taking one of the side seams and I'm just going to seam rip from here to here. Just like a tiny hole. And I promise there's a reason for this. I would never make you seam rip for no reason. As you can see here, this is that hole that we just made and now I have attached a safety pin to one of the straps. I'm going to feed it through the hole to bring it up to where it needs to be. Now that I have the strap peeking through, you just wanna make sure that the floral side lines up with the floral side and the black is with the black. Now I'm just going to serge it a couple of times to really secure the strap. Using the same steps, I'm going to insert the second strap through that same hole and guide it through the suit to where it needs to be. Now that I have my straps attached to the front, I am going to measure four and a half inches from this side seam and make a mark. Now do the same from the other side seam. As you can see here, I've made two marks and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to seam rip two tiny little holes because that's where the straps are going to be attached in the back. Now that I've seam ripped those two little tiny holes, we can flip the suit inside out. So from the original hole that we made, we are just going to flip the suit inside out. Now that I flipped the suit inside out, I'm going to attach the safety pin to the other side of the strap and then I'm going to feed it through that tiny hole that we just made. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that your straps aren't tangled when you insert it. Now you're going to pin that strap in place. Repeat with the other strap. Once you've pinned your straps in place, you should have something that kind of looks like this. Now we're going to flip it back to the wrong side so that we can secure the straps. 
When you flipped it back to the wrong side, you should see the straps peeking out with the safety pins like this. Now we're just gonna go ahead and secure this and then we're almost done. With the top flip to the right side, you should have something that looks like this. And now the last thing for us to do is to sew up this hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hand stitch this shut with some needle and thread. I just put the top on to make sure it fits and I'm pretty happy with how it looks, so let's start working on the bottom. The first thing I'm gonna do is attach the bottoms at the crotch seam. So I'm taking the front piece and the back piece, pinning and then surging along that crotch seam. Now you should have something that looks like this. Go ahead and do it with the other fabric. You now should have two pieces that look like this. Lay them on top of each other, right sides facing. Now pin along both leg holes. Then surge along the edges you just pinned. As you can see here, I've attached both pieces of fabric together along the leg holes. And now I'm going to attach the swimwear elastic. And I'm going to do it the exact same way that we did the top along the areas that we just surged, making sure to not stretch it while I'm sewing. I've added the elastic on both leg holes and now we just have to seam rip a tiny little hole on one of the crotch seams. Here is the tiny hole I seam ripped in the crotch. Now from this waist opening, you are going to turn the suit inside out. Next, we are going to attach the bikini bottoms at the side seams. You wanna make sure that the floral fabric is pinned with the other floral fabric and the black fabric is pinned with the black fabric. Repeat on the other side. As you can see here, I have both floral fabrics pinned together and the black fabric is folded down and also pinned together. So both side seams with your overlocker. With both your side seams sewn down, you should have something that looks like this. So it's already starting to take shape and the only thing that's not attached right now is the waistband. So to finish the waistband, what we're gonna do is we're going to find that hole that we made in the crotch a little earlier and we're going to flip the suit out back to the wrong side. Now your bottoms should look like this. Make sure that the floral fabric is touching the floral fabric and that the black fabric is touching the black fabric. Now I'm taking the outer layer of the floral fabric and pinning that to the outer layer of the black fabric, making sure that I don't accidentally pin any other layers in between. Continue to pin all along the waistband. So I've gone ahead and pinned the entire top of the waistband, being really, really careful to make sure that I was only pinning the outer layer of the floral fabric and the outer layer of the black fabric. Now I'm gonna start surging from this end and when I get to the other end, you'll see that I'll be able to start pulling out the fabric that's sandwiched inside and continue to finish the waistband. First of all, I want to apologize for this portion of the video because I realize now that my left hand is in the way and literally blocking everything I'm trying to show. But what I'm doing is I'm sewing the outer layers together, making sure I'm not catching any of the layers that are sandwiched inside. This was the part I was talking about a little earlier. As you can see here, I'm pulling out the fabric that's sandwiched inside so that I can continue to sew the waistband. This part is a little tricky, so just be really patient and continue to just work that fabric out so that you can finish sewing the waistband. As you can see here, we are back to where we started. So continue to sew your waistband closed and we can move on. Now that I've sewn the entire waistband, we are going to attach the elastic to the waistband. Also, don't be too concerned if your bathing suit bottom kind of looks like this weird tubey thing. I promise it's only temporary. So I just attached the elastic all along the waistband and my bikini bottoms look something like this. So that's the floral fabric in the front and then that's the black fabric and the rest of it is sandwiched in between both layers. Now we are going to find that hole that we made in the crotch, it's right here, and we're going to flip the bottoms out back to the right sides. And you should have something that looks like this. The last thing we have to do is sew that hole up with a needle and thread. Here is the completed reversible bikini.
Now that we're done with the bathing suit, we can move on to the final part of this upcycle, which is the cover-up. And I'm kind of imagining like a cover-up that you wear when you're on vacation at a resort and you're like in a villa that's like out in the middle of the ocean and everything kind of happens in slow motion. You magically always have a drink in your hand. But then you're like bloated from drinking all day, so then you need to put on your cover-up. But anyways, because this curtain is so long, I'm gonna make this like a floor length cover-up and it's gonna be pretty simple. I think it's essentially going to be like a kimono style with a drawstring waist tie um, and luckily for me because this is a curtain it had a casing for the curtain rod so I'm going to seam rip this and reuse the casing as the casing for my waistband. Moving on to the waist tie. This is the top part of the curtain and as you can see here there is a folded edge. I'm going to be cutting at about three quarters of an inch from that folded edge. Cut working your way along the entire width of the curtain. Fold this bottom edge up to meet the folded edge and press. Fold in half and press. Continue to work your way along the entire drawstring. So to secure, making sure that you fold in the exposed edges on both ends. Now that I have my drawstring and the casing ready, I'm gonna set these aside and start working on the sleeves. First, I fold this lace section in half. Then I measure to 12 inches and mark. Using my ruler, I draw a straight line. Secure with pins and cut. Now I'm seam ripping this lace section from the rest of the curtain. Repeat all of those steps for the other sleeve. Now we're going to cut from this point all the way to the top of the curtain. We'll be discarding this side of the fabric and we'll be using this side to complete the rest of the cover up. Moving on, I'm taking the fabric that we kept from the rest of the curtain and cutting that into four equal pieces. I fold my fabric in half widthwise, pin and I cut along this folded edge. You should now have two pieces that are exactly the same. Repeat these steps with each of these pieces and you should be left with four equal sized pieces. Now that I have all four of my panels cut out, I'm gonna start putting this cover up together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two of the panels and I'm going to attach it at the top and this is gonna create the shoulder seam. So I'm gonna pin and sew and once I'm done with that, I'm gonna repeat it with the other two panels. This is the shoulder seam that we just sewed. Fold your sleeve in half to find the center point and mark with a pin. Now lay the two pieces right sides facing, making sure that that pin lines up with the shoulder seam. Pin to secure and sew. Here is the sleeve sewn on. Now you're going to fold your garment in half, right sides facing and pin to secure. Sew along the bottom of the sleeve and along the side of the garment. Because I want my cover up to have slits on the side, I'm only going to sew up to this point. After sewing that, I repeated these steps on the other side and now you should have two pieces that look like this. Now I'm attaching those two pieces along the back seam. Starting from the hem, pin to secure. I'm only going to be sewing till this point because I want there to be a small V in the back. As you can see here, I've sewn the back panels together and we have the basic shape of our cover up done. I also wanted to show you guys that I hemmed all of the exposed edges by just folding it over twice and sewing it down. Did the same here as well. And now we just have to sew on the casing for our waistband on. Using the shoulder seams as a guide, I am measuring and marking 13 inches all around the cover up. Now I'm lining up the top of the casing to that 13 inch mark and pinning to secure. Sew the casing along the top and the bottom to create a channel for your drawstring. Now that we're done with that, we can move on to our final step, which is inserting the drawstring into the casing. And what I've done is I've put a safety pin on one end of the drawstring and I'm just gonna feed it through the casing. tutorial on how I turned an oversized bathing suit into a reversible bikini. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with your friends, and as always, thank you so much for watching.